Okay, Proverbs chapter 28. And we're at verse 15. And we'll do 14 because it looks good. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. We talked about that last time, Pharaoh. Sin. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. There's the Antichrist. There he is. You got the Antichrist in the Old Testament in Proverbs. You got Jesus in the Proverbs in the Old Testament. And you get Christians that don't read the Bible and they miss. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. You want a longer life, don't covet. You want to do right, do what God tells you to do. And the prince that lacks understanding, he oppresses. Gives a hard time because he doesn't know what he's doing. And then covetous, he got, hate it. You gotta be content. Now, you know, being content, you know, it's you cannot not want anything. Because Jesus said, "Ask, seek, and knock." And Jesus wouldn't say, "Ask, seek, and knock." You know, if covetous means didn't ask. Paul says, "Pray without ceasing." And one of the prayers is asking, seeking. Paul said, my heart's desire is that Israel will be saved. That's asking. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. If a man has harmed another man, if he has killed another man, and he's, he's on the road to capital punishment, He's on the, let him be. No, no stay of execution. So when the Catholic Church goes out in front of a prison and the media goes inside the prison and they want them to stop the stay they, of a capital punishment of the, of the, of uh, executing a person by the laws of the state that has been tried by his peers and has found guilty. When the Catholic Church and the media goes and stop the execution, stop the execution. The Bible says, Mr. Pope, you're not to stop them. Why is it that the Pope and the Catholics don't stop the execution? And yet the entire Inquisition period of the Catholic Church was killing Bible believers. Why is that? Now, I say, as far as what the Bible says, if a man is found guilty by two or three witnesses, by a judge or a jury, he ought to be executed right away, speedily, not within years. And I would give him allowance of America law to appeal his case two or three times. And I say, as far as the, the execution of a criminal found guilty, you take him out back of the courthouse and you do it right there in the back. Don't even bring him back to the jail. And, oh, 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 oh. Don't say you're a Christian. Don't say you're a Bible believer. You have any other. That's why we got the crime running around today. That's why we got full prisons. Of all the full prisons, listen, I've been in the prison ministry. One of the people who it was the most cockiest person that knows the Bible. Was a murderer. 
How many people of the overcrowding of the prison system, correctional system, by the rights of the states and the rights of the Bible, that they should not be living any longer after being found guilty? They ought to be put to death. We're a Christian nation. And yet we have murderers still on death row living. And they will live until they die. 99% chance they will die of natural causes. Old age. That's not a Christian Bible. I forget it's China, Japan, or one of those nations there. They're on death row. They will die to death. But they won't tell you what day is going to happen. I think that's. I think we should have a set amount of appeals. And once that set amount of appeals is set, for, then take them outside the back of the courthouse and bang, boom, whatever, how you're going to do it. Bible says don't stay it. But the media and the Catholic Church tries to stop it. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. But he that perverse in his way shall fall at once. And again, you say, well, contradiction. I know people who live liquid, who live wickedly, not liquidly. And they, you know, they, and they keep doing, they keep doing. And then when death comes, that's an instant fall that they'll never come out of. You either walk uprightly and you're saved, or you walk perverse and that one fall. Hey, you may have that fall on this earth. It didn't say on earth. But definitely, when you have a wicked life, once you die, then you fall into, into hell. Or if you're saved, you, you, you fall at the judgment seat of Christ with just wood, hay, and stubble, no rewards. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Work. Work produces fruit. But he that follows after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Unless you're an American, you give them welfare. Now, a man that tills his bread should have plenty of bread. If a person's working, the only job they can get in the economy is a part-time job or a minimum wage job, then we should help them out. I mean, we got such a government, great government we have, that, you know, the, the rich people, you know, ruled by the rich, you know, we live, you know, democracy and all that. And the workers are underpaid and overworked. And they're going to stand before God one day, saved or lost, and the employers are going to be guilty. Because the Bible says you're to justly pay your employee. And the Bible says you're supposed to pay them at the end of the day. And we've been reading through the book of Proverbs. If they rightly do a job, they're supposed to be rightly paid. There are hard workers in America that are underpaid by rich. And they'll be weighed out one day. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. There you go. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Anybody that runs out, I'm going to get rich, I'm going to get rich. You're not innocent. Even in, in the realms of gambling. You have wasted your money on, on one arm bandage. You have wasted your money on cards. You have wasted your money on scratch tickets and numbers. And your waste of your money, you're going to give an account before God. What God has given you in a paycheck, 
And then if you wasted your money and taken food and goods out of your wife or husband and children, you're going to be found at fault. And you give more money to gambling and the, and the pursuit of being rich and give nothing to missionaries and give nothing to your church and your pastor. You're guilty. But a man that is stick to itness, I, I forget where I heard that from. <laughs> I like oh, stick to itness, he's going to get the blessings of God. To have respect of persons is not good. Oh, that's uh, every single church I've been in. They got the favorite family. And I had one pastor tell me, well, Jesus had his Peter, James, and John. And then he got mad at me. I said, well, Peter, James, and John were faithful to the word of God and went out and witnessed and did things for the Lord. The family that I'm talking about don't do nothing for the Lord. Well, who do you think you are? <laughs> Your clicks, the Bible says not good. And well, you know, Jesus, you know, he had the Peter, James, and John. True. Maybe they were the, the three men of the 12 that were there to do what they were doing. You know, the life of Andrew, the life of Philip, we see in John chapter 1. Later on, we find out Philip is evangelist and his daughters are faithful. Just because they're not mentioned by name. Does it mean that they weren't part of the? Listen, Jesus sent them out two by two, all twelve of them, and they done the works. But God would use Peter to write First and Second Peter. God will use John to write Revelation, First, Second, Third John, the Gospel of John. And God will use James, the brother of John, to write the Book of James. Well, it's not the James. That's the brothers. Yeah, you think whatever you want. It's funny how the three books of the New Testament, Peter and and the, and John are written by the apostles of John, but then James is written by James the less. I don't think so. But that's not really a hard document that you know to be stressed upon. I believe it was Peter, James, and John that wrote the books of James, Peter. In Revelation in first and second, third John. Matthew must have been somebody that you don't see his name much, but he has a gospel of Matthew. What about Luke, the companion of, of, of Paul, who writes the the, the 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 gospel of Luke and writes the Acts of the Apostles? What about John Mark? Came to the light to the point of life. He's not mentioned one. Paul said, I, 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 "You and I are going to have an argument because I don't want to take him with us." That sissy went home, or whatever. However, he went home, and we have a gospel of Mark. And you know what? We're to do things for the Lord and not be, listen, our name will be mentioned in the judgment seat of Christ. And that's not this thing, you know, Jesus had the Peter, James, and John. And they, you know, they, and I've had them say, oh, they were the cliques of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the book of Acts, Jude. What about them? For a piece of bread that man will transgress. Well, let me give you an example where we just talk about the disciples, the apostles. For 30 pieces of silver, Judas said, I'll sell them out. You know, the, and the thing is, listen, I've been in many churches. To have respect of persons is not good. For a piece of bread that man will transgress. You know, the church clicks. I got all the I got the church's heads right here in my mind. I'm saying nothing. You know the church families that the church clicks were? 
You know, within time, those church families, the cliques, churned on the church and churned on the ministry and went another way and did something else. I mean, you say, what's the percentage? 90 to 100%. Yeah, maybe less than 100%. About 90, 95%. Any man is capable. They say every man's got a price. We're supposed to put our trust in the Lord, not man. He that hastes to be rich. Oh, there we go again. About rich. You know, Solomon, he was rich. <laughs> Solomon and James writes to us about men being rich. And even Jesus alludes to the fact is the warnings of being rich. And when you put it to the tribulation, period, there's only one way you're going to be rich in the tribulation period, and that's you've got the mark. And there's only one way you're going to be poor in the tribulation period, you don't have the mark. There is no middle class in the tribulation period. You're either going to have the mark or you're not going to have the mark. There is no middle class. He that hastens to be rich has an evil eye. Now, I would believe that born again Bible believing Christians, there. <coughs> I would believe by what I read in the Bible. They're not hastening to be rich. God bless them with being rich. And when, when I read and heard some of their testimonies, when they have been faithful of giving to God and the church and the ministries, the time and money and effort from their businesses, God returns that blessing back. You know, th th those verses, they, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. And let me check back. What's that other verse that people misuse? Oh. But God, but my God should buy all your need according to the riches glory of, by Christ Jesus. When you look at the context of Philippians chapter 4, the context is the Philippians were giving money to God and being a blessing to God. What do we read over here? Faithful men shall abound with blessings. There are people who are rich by the blessings of God, and they didn't strive to be rich. It was given to them by God because they were found faithful in what God has given them. And considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. Well, how can you be rich? Hasten to be rich and be poverty. You waste your money. You have such bad business deals that your character has been ruined and you don't get no business. You have been foolish with the money that has been given to you by God and you waste it all. Or is that rich man that says, I'll tear everything down, I'll rebuild it, and big builder and bigger than that. And then when he stands at the great white throne judgment, he ain't got no more riches. And that rich man that's in hell, when you had the poor man Lazarus go to Abraham's bosom, that rich man. He's in poverty. He has no more riches. And to think about this, when, when a rich man goes into hell, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to go into, in, uh, into heaven. It says, one that hastens to be rich. And do you realize that there are men that go out there saved and lost? They want to get rich. I have a twofold in my life and my ministry. The twofold of my my ministry is I want to tell people, the lost people, how to get saved 
and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number two, Christians, I want to grow Christians. I want them to go to the next growing stage, to the next growing stage, to they get the aged. I don't want Christians to be newborn babes forever. I don't want them to be young children forever. I don't want them to be young men forever. I want them to grow in the Lord. Proverbs 30 has always been my prayer. I wish right now the Lord give me a little more. But right now, hey, listen, my bills are paid. God will take care of me. But when I get to the judgment seat of Christ, God's going to reward me if I've been faithful. Faithful men shall abound with blessings. He's going to reward me with what the rich man goes after. Gold, silver, precious stones. And crowns. And inheritance, which means land. And rulership, kingship, under the king of kings. So every man, everything that a, that a man strives to be rich, God's going to be bountifully giving to his servants. Where well, we didn't want to be rich, we wanted to be faithful. And the poverty comes to the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ when not that of Jesus Christ pleases him, but that what pleases himself. And it may not be riches out of the wallet, riches of a sports team, riches of a of a of an actress, an actress, um, uh, 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 riches of collecting, riches of anything but Jesus Christ and the lost souls and the saved souls, which God will reward those that are faithful, gold, gold standard, silver, silver is used as money. Precious stones, you know, diamonds are girl's best friend. Well, I'm going to be the bride of Jesus Christ. Crowns, rulership, and the inheritance of land. That's what everything the carnal man saved and lost once. And then when he stands before God, the great white throne judgment, if he's lost in the, in the judgment seat of Christ, when he's saved, he shall have poverty. Poverty forever. If a man at the judgment seat of Christ does not get gold, silver, precious stones, a crown, or an inheritance, he goes off into New Jerusalem into the eternal life with nothing. And God is not going to reward you of something, a little piece of gold, just because you try. He ain't going to do that. And a lost man that comes away from the lake of, uh, from the great white throne judgment, goes off into the lake of fire, burneth forever with absolutely nothing. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flatters with his tongue. That, that doesn't fit every man. But the general sense of that verse is when you try to help someone and they come to the realization, you know what, you're trying to help me. I really appreciate it. You're helping me grow. Rather than flattery and little good rewards and, you know, little happy faces and God just loves you and just flowery, great little messages and just, you know, cover up the, what they're doing wrong. You ought not to say nothing. Be nice to them. And you let them keep on going and do what they do wrong. And then it becomes a habit. And then when somebody does faithful long, hey, you know, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. It's become a habit. Now it's hard to break. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith, it is no transgression. The same is a comforter of, of a destroyer. That's Apollyon. That's the devil. That's the same one that went into the houses in Egypt where there was no blood over the door. 
And the Pharisees and the Sadducees had such a system worked out that, you know, instead of giving your parents inheritance, if you were given to us the, the, the temple, and you can tell your mom, your mom and dad, well, you don't have anything like that because you've given it to the temple. And then, you know, after after your parents die, however they worked it out, we'll give you a little bit back for a fee. That's not only robbery, that's that's theft, that's that's lying. That can go good to, to the church age too. That's not honoring your parents. He that's a proud heart stirs up strife. Arguments, troubles, problems. Why? Because he's right. You're wrong. Well, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Don't you know me? Don't you know what position I am? Don't you know us? How great we are? That brings argument. But he that put his trust in the Lord. So the proud don't put his trust in the Lord. Shall be made fat. Fat with what? That ain't fat on your on your bones. That's fat with anything. Could be riches. It could, yeah, oh, God will feed you well. God will bless you well. And the, the proud don't get fat. The proud don't get blessed. What's it say? The faithful man shall abound in blessings. Be fat in, with blessings. Not the proud. And when you got a proud, prideful church and pastor and people and deacons or any Christians that are proud, God is not going to bless you. I know it'll be another great study, a study once I do later after abomination. Go through all the places where it talks about pride, proud, haughtiness. And you won't find one place in the Bible where it's good. You'll find two or three places in the Bible. I think it's two. We've done it already. About the, you'll find two places where there is a, actually a good fool. You found actually there are two fools in the Bible that they're good. But you're not going to find one place in the, in the Bible with pride. or God's not proud. God doesn't say, you know, son, I'm proud of you. He says, well done. This is my beloved son. I am well pleased. God never said, listen, when, when a man gets up in a pulpit, I'm sorry. I'm proud of this person. I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of this church. You're sinning against God by saying that. There is no good proud and there is no bad proud as much as there is no good lie and there's a bad lie. All proud is sin. All lies are sin. He that trusts in his own heart, that's pride, is a fool. Let your heart lead you. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things, and who can trust it? Jesus said out of the heart comes the adultery, the murders, the lying, the theft. Don't you trust your heart? My heart tells me so. You're a fool. And that verse is in Jeremiah 17, 9, about the wickedness of your heart. Let's look at that. Jeremiah 17, 9. I don't think you're going to look it up, so we'll look it up. Christians are lazy. You know, there are Christians out there so lazy, they don't even bring a Bible to church. There are Christians so lazy, they leave their Bible in the car. Well, at least they know where it is next Sunday. Christians, I'm Christian. Jeremiah 17, 9, not Christians. The heart is deceitful. Would you do business with a deceitful person? But you'll trust your heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? Don't trust your heart. But whoso walketh wisely, well, you're not walking wise if you trust your heart. He shall be delivered from troubles, problems, and all that. 
What do you got to be delivered from? Walking in your heart. When you walk after the heart, you're going to get in trouble. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. And we've seen that through Proverbs. Help the poor. Again, you got to rightfully, in this day and age in 2020, you got to rightfully find the correct poor people because there are people out there who says they're poor and they're not poor. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Well, it's the many, the, the people you're not helping. And we've already read through Proverbs, if a poor man's out there seeking help, and you don't, they're going to cry unto the Lord, and the Lord's going to hear them. As much as curse, the Bible says, about his people Israel, I will curse them that curse you. The poor person, if you don't help them, I'll curse you. And they'll curse you. And I'll listen to them cursing you. And that ain't blankety blank blank blankety blank 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 blank. That ain't the f bomb. That's Lord, Lord God, I need help. I I I need a sandwich. I need, hey, that guy wouldn't help me. You know that guy's got money. He wouldn't help. Lord God, go after him. God's like okay. When the wicked rise. Men hide themselves. They're supposed to. With the media today, the wicked ride, and they just give them coverage, and they just, oh, we just love them. Oh, we're, we take his side. We're on his side. We just, we're living contrary to the Bible. One last statement. Elections are over. Well, they'll be over soon. One last statement. All right. You got two political candidates. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You got Jesus Christ is holy and right. Could you say Jesus is wicked? No. Could you say two men who've never trusted Jesus Christ as their savior are wicked? Yes. And look at all the Christians favoring the non-Christians who don't believe on Jesus Christ. And go vote for them. And go stand for their parties. And then don't stick up for the holy and righteous one. Hopefully that'll be my last 2020 political. But when they perish, die, the righteous increase. Not in the church age of the scene. Matter of fact, a lot of the seeing church age, and Psalm is not writing it. The righteous are, are falling away. The book of Daniel. You only read about four faithful men. Were there others? Read the book of Daniel yourself and tell me if there were others. 